Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and pretty much learned that Maggie is innocent, or pretty much proved that rather, and we were going to go ahead and leave when Payne realized that, oh wait, I have another witness, and he decided, you know what, we're gonna stall the court for a couple more hours just so we can get this witness out. And so now we have to deal with this, unfortunately. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into this. September 8th, 11.43 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. A amnesia? Oh, I kind of forgot about that. Yeah, we have amnesia. I already mentioned that in the intro to Episode 2, so that wasn't really worth bringing up. I can't believe my lawyer's trying to defend me in such a state. I, uh... Why didn't you tell me, sir? I'm sorry I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I know what to do. I heard you can fix something like this with a really strong shock to your system. Come on, lower your head a little. A Maggie kick should be all you need. Uh, no, 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 no. I think I'll pass on this one. Come on! Uh, I'm sorry. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them alone. I tend to stick my nose where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. Well, my head's one problem you won't be tackling today. Well, we're here to solve your problem first. We can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you can fill me in on a few things? Of course, I'd be honored to. Uh, well, I guess we'll start with my name and then I can tell you all about me. No, no, that's okay. Really, I think I know you and your name pretty well by now. I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So, my name is Phoenix Wright? Huh, what a weird name. Hmm, this is serious. You really don't remember. I'll tell you what, sir. You can have this back, and maybe it'll help. This is... a business card? I got this from you. It's my most prized possession. You can borrow it for now, but please give it back, okay? Okay. There's some numbers written on the back. It's hard because of the DS's compression, but... I can't really... I wonder what it says on there. There's some numbers written on the back. Oh, that's your cell phone number. Phoenix's business card added to the court record. I guess for now we should stop talking about me. And start talking about this case. This case? Yep. Can you think of anything that would be helpful, helpful for me to know? Um, what can I tell you? Uh, um, hmm. I can't think of anything other than the incident with that cell phone, but... Cell phone? Yeah, your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the, de at the detention center, sir. Hurry up and tell me. This might be very important. Okay, Roger. It was on the day of the crime, just before 6 p.m. I picked up a lost cell phone while on a walk with Dustin. All of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. We agreed to meet up at 6 p.m. Dustin and I waited for the p person to show up, but they never did. Hmm. So where is the phone that you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. Huh? To me? Is that the phone in my pocket? Y you mean this? Do you think it has anything to do with the murder? I don't really know. But if I- Ah! You were here all along! You're so mean! I called you a million times, but you wouldn't pick up! And when I went to check in the courtroom, everyone had already left. Ah! Now who in the heck is this? Let me guess, I'm supposed to know this girl too. Hey, good morning, Maggie. And good morning to you too, Maya. So? So? How's it going? Is there a word for worse than abysmal? Hey, things were going pretty good before Payne stepped in with his extra witness. Also, very exciting, Maya is now back. Oh? And what if I said that everything will be fine? 
I remember, I think in my original series, I did a much higher voice for Maya, but I'm gonna have to go a bit lower. Uh, sort of my Sayori voice from DDLC, if I had to reference another project. But uh, b that's because there's another character who is like a main cast member who I have to do a very high voice for. And I'm just gonna make sure to make Maya's a bit lower. Pretend that somehow within the nine months between case four and this case, she somehow grew a much deeper voice. That's right, it's Maya to the rescue with the ultra decisive, super important evidence. Here you are, Nick, the thing you wanted me to bring. Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. What the heck is this? A list? It has about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. It was kind of tough, but I managed to find out some dirt. It looks like these guys are up to no good. No good? Is in? There's a group of con artists the police are currently investigating. I think these guys are members of that group. Names list added to the court record. Let's check out the court record, because I haven't read the descriptions for stuff in a while. Baseball glove. A birthday present from Maggie to the victim. It was custom made. It's my business card. I hand wrote my cell phone number on the back. A list of unfamiliar names and phone numbers. Members of a con artist group? And that's about it for now. Why would a group of con artists pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me. Hmm. Where did you get this list from in the first place? What? Why are you asking that? You're the one who asked me to look this up yesterday. Oh. Is that right? These numbers were in the memory of that phone Maggie found. Hmm. That's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. I hope I never get to be a forgetful old prune like you. Um, Maya, actually, Mr. Wright is... Mr. Wright, recess is now over. Please bring the defendant and return to the courtroom immediately. Oh, oops. Guess you have to get going. We could talk about you being old later, Nick. Wish us luck. I guess I have all the pieces now. More or less. All that's left is to put it all together. I'm not going to lose this. I can't. Come on, Nick. Better get a move on. Y yeah. September 8th, 11.54 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. The court will now reconvene. Please call your next witness to the stand, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. But before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about the next witness. He has a tendency to say things to rub people the wrong way, you see. So I guess that the court might be a little lenient on... There is no need to give a preface. Just hurry up and call your witness, please. Y yes Your Honor. The prosecution calls his next witness. A drifter who was taking a walk in the park on the day of the murder. This guy. Please state your name for the court, witness. Before I do, I would like to clarify a little something. Huh? Oh, alright. Go ahead. Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps as a drifter who is taking a walk? Did I? But I will not stand for that. Now you've got- now you've tinted the court's eyes and colored me wrongly. Sure, I suppose calling me a university student would not be the absolute truth, but to give it in your subtle would be as evil as death, and I can't have that. Everything in my life is completely of the utmost highest top grade quality, you understand. I'm merely looking for that perfect top-notch unbeatable university, don't you see? I have a rigorous selection process, and I was in serious thought during my walk as- He is old bag speech thing, so that's how you know he sucks. Also, he was the guy who hit Phoenix on the head in the opening, so... Yeah. Usually Ace Attorney games like to show who the killer is at the very beginning of the first case, and then all of the rest of them they'll let you figure out for yourself. Yes, yes, I understand. I'm very sorry. I'll be more careful from now on. What is he? A human chatterbox? Ugh, I have to question him. Fashion, cars, women, glasses, and of course, university. First rates only need apply. Glasses? But you aren't wearing glasses. That's enough. Your name, witness. Oh? Is that how you want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down. I see how you work now. You owed people on your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but you thought wrong. Uh, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Oh, man. 
I forgive you. All right, I suppose I can tell you my name. I am Richard Wellington, the drifting virtuoso with a PhD in drifting, as it were. If you wanted to, you could call me a university student in transit. Ahem. Ahem, Mr. Wellington. On the day of the murder, you were taking a, a trolling through the park, correct? It would appear that you are attached to that word. If you must, then by all means. But I remind you that I am in no way a prepubescent boy out on a walk with mommy. If you must know, I am... A anyway, please testify to the court of what you saw during your walk through the park. See, you said it again, taking a walk, you know, you... What you witnessed will do, Mr. Wellington. It's always funny whenever the judge is like, Oh my god, get on with it, please, to a witness. What I saw that day. I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above, right in front of my eyes. Without a thought, I looked up, and there, I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course, I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. I wonder what the contradiction is. Hmm, that was certainly a decisive testimony. Decisive? Nick, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you have to say? How can you be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I believe in my client. You mean Maggie? Yes. And if she really is innocent, then that can only mean one thing. That guy is lying! You may now question the witness, Mr. Wright. I'll find out the truth, no matter how well you craft your lies. I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. So you were at the park all afternoon? You seem to have a lot of free time. Hmm. <laughs> That was very rude of you, but then again, what can I expect? That's what you get from a man who graduated from a no-name trashy university. No name? Trashy? Now, this might be hard for a mush-headed, feeble-minded baboon for you, but... I have to think very carefully about the future of our great country. But I thought you said you were thinking about which college to go to just now. Oh, please! Which university I go to will directly affect the very future of this country. That arrogant little snot. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. I did not mean to press A, I meant to press L. How did you know what time it was? I see you're not wearing a watch, so... Is that the best you can do? Do you think you can just discredit me like that? You are just a third-rate biased fool. I guess I can't expect real smarts from you. Ugh, his arrogance is really intolerable. So what should I do now? Rule number one of Ace Attorney, always press harder. Answer the question, how did you know what time it was? Tisk tisk. I can't believe I have to deal with a worm like you. You're just a shallow man who can only slam on desks and point at people for fun. <laughs> I guess I don't have a choice. I'll, I, I'll try to explain it so that even a third-rate simpleton like you can understand. I've switched between like three different variations of a British accent within the past like three minutes. If you can't tell, I'm not very good at doing a British accent or any accent at all. So you'll have to apologize. I just want to make this guy sound like a rich guy because he's Richard Wellington. I just want him to sound real like, oh my, you're so beneath me and stuff like that. There was a little thing they call a clock at the park. Did you get that? Do you know what a clock is? It's a thing that tells you the time. As you can see, Mr. Wright, it's even in this picture of the crime scene. Ah. Uh, so it is. Ugh. I looked at that clock, and that's how I knew the time. But if you're going to ask me, this whole concept of breaking time apart into fragments, you still live in the nonsense that no man should follow. A real first-class person doesn't live by nor is he chained by time. And to wear a watch? Ha! Huh. What a ridiculous notion. People should live freely without constraints. That's how life should be. 
And yet again, another flood of meaningless words. Talk about a first-class waste of time. In any case... I miss Phoenix being really, like, in his own head, just being like, Ugh, this guy sucks. Because, not to say that other protagonists don't do that, but Phoenix is really just, like, on my side when it's like, Oh, this character is just the worst, huh? How did you know he was a police officer? You obviously have no idea how powerful my deductive reasoning skills are. With one glance, I could tell just what kind of occupation he held. That's surely do yourself hairstyle, practically police officer. It's also the way he his tie on those local issues. Ugh. Oh, and I suppose it was also because he was wearing an officer's uniform. Shouldn't that statement have come first? Wow, that's pretty impressive. Hey, Nick. Do you think he's figured out what I do? Even I haven't figured that out yet. Without a thought, I looked up, and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Are you sure you got a good look at her face? Animals have a thing called an eye, Mr. Wright. They use this eye to see things. In the case of humans, we have two of them. Yes, even you. Shut up! I don't care if I have them or not. Did you or did you not get a clear look at her face? That's what the witness was just about to get to. I would like to request that Mr. Wright not use such a loud voice during questioning. Sustained. Mr. Wright, please refrain from raising your voice in this court. Then please don't make me have to raise my voice. Are oh, you finished? I'd like to continue if that's alright with you. Of course I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. So you're sure you are not mistaken? Please, don't confuse your pitiful train wreck of a life with mine. I'm what you call a famous brand name product, while you are only a cheap imitation. There's no way someone as magnificent as myself could have made a mistake. Of course, of course. Oh ho ho ho, of course. Did you notice anything else of interest, witness? The only other thing I saw was a banana that fell with a police officer. The banana? Well, it was actually more than just one. More like a bunch of bananas. Now what would a bunch of bananas be doing there? And why would I know such a thing? I'm only telling you what I saw. That's really strange. Maggie never mentioned anything about a bunch of bananas. That's it, Nick. He's gotta be lying about the bananas. Hmm. He could be, but... There's no reason for him to lie about there being bananas at the crime scene. What if it's not a lie? Well, maybe he thought he was seeing one thing and it was something else. If he mistook something else for a bunch of bananas, then that would be an inaccuracy. Think, Phoenix, think! My client is innocent, there's no way he could have seen what he says he did. Which means if we can somehow show he's lying... Yeah, that's exactly what we need to do. She's right. Got a sharp, she's got a sharp mind, but I just wish I could remember who she is. Is everything okay, Nick? So the contradiction here is that we want to move over to the statement where he says the thing about the banana. So, we don't know anything about bananas being at the crime scene. However, you'll remember this baseball glove right here is incredibly yellow, as was pointed out previously. And it is Dustin's, so maybe he was carrying it with him at the time. Let's give it a shot. Objection! Mr. Wellington. I believe I have the bananas you saw. Right here. Ah, so you knew about the bananas too. Why didn't you say so earlier? But don't think you can use this as a way to pull more information out of me. And that's where you'd be wrong. M Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Isn't that a baseball glove? Huh? 
What? A baseball glove? Doesn't it look delicious? Care for a bite? Th that's That's not... It's a... No! Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. This witness has bad eyesight. By the way, just how bad are your eyes? Huh? How... What? You... Why are you asking me about this all of a sudden? Your Honor, it is, it is very simple to mistake a glove for a bunch of bananas. No, I don't think so. Objection overruled. Y you You're one of those people. Yes, you know what I mean. You're like those people who refuse to accept Galileo for his Copernican theory. You are too used to your worldview to realize that there are other new possibilities. Sure, in the end, we find out that it is in fact a glove, not bananas. However, when we from far, I do think there is room enough for doubt, don't you? And that is why I asked how bad your eyesight is. They're both 2025, and I suppose you're going to tell me that's terrible, right? Why are you not wearing your glasses today, then? Um, that's because I lost them recently, you see. Of course, I was planning on getting a new pair made right away. But you know, my glasses are no ordinary glasses, so to replace them. How about when you witnessed the crime? Were you wearing your glasses then? How about it, witness? Y you are an unrelenting evil man. You're like those people who protected Joan of Arc and put her to death. She was brave and courageous, only to be caught by horrible, unrighteous people. And while she didn't do anything wrong, she was still gruesomely burned at the... Which boils down to you were not wearing your glasses at that time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the scene of the crime and that of the defendant cannot be proven to be the same by this witness. But, but the height difference was only nine feet. It was very possible for him to see the face of the culprit standing up on Gepper Pass. Hmm. Witness, please be more accurate in your testimony. Remember, a person's life is at stake. Y yes Your Honor. Now then, please continue with your testimony. Please tell the court what happened next in the moments after you witnessed the crime. New personal headcanon, not even for the series, but for my own voice acting. The reason Richard Wellington has such an inconsistent voice for me is because he's not even British, and he doesn't even actually have that accent, but he just pretends to have that accent to seem smart. That's what I'm gonna go with anyway. The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as I, as soon as she realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. They must have a lot of free time on their hands since they showed up within 10 minutes. Hmm. So the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away. Yes, that is correct. Which is why even someone without a superior brain like mine can understand that. That girl is the murderer. You may question the witness now, Mr. Wright. Actually, we're going to question the witness in next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!